Okay, we're ready to get started with the next presentation. Pop your headphones on. You might even be able to hear me because I talk so loud without the headphones. Uh, could you please put your hands together and welcome to the stage Tori Walker from Apple. All right, shall we get into it then? Okay, my name is Tori Holbrook Walker. I'm a senior software engineer on the Core Audio Frameworks team, and I'm here today to give you a very brief talk on MIDI 2.0 on Mac OS and iOS. First, here's the agenda for today's short talk. I'm going to generally say MIDI 2.0 a lot in this talk, but please hear it as MIDI 2.0 and Universal MIDI Packet, or UMP, since everything that I'm talking about also applies to MIDI 1.0 protocol in universal MIDI packet format, which I like to call MIDI 1UP because I'm a gamer. The talk is going to begin with universal MIDI packet data structures. We're gonna move on to talking about the core MIDI universal MIDI packet APIs. Then we'll go to the USB MIDI 2.0 capabilities of Mac OS and iOS then on to audio unit and AV audio engine APIs, and we will finish up talking about some pro app support. So MIDI 2.0 is descending on the runway of the industry right now. And with support built into core MIDI, audio unit V2 and V3, AV audio engine, there's never been a better time to make your technology solution MIDI 2.0 native and or compliant. Now first off, this is a high level talk, so uh, you'll find very detailed information on today's topics on Apple's worldwide developer site and in the associated frameworks header files. Today I'd basically like to just point out how simple it is to make the jump to MIDI 2.0 if you haven't already. Let's get started with the UMP data structures. Event packets and event lists are used throughout all of Apple's MIDI 2.0 Universal MIDI Packet APIs. An event packet is a UMP stream of simultaneous events of total length words. Though the structure is declared to be a specific length, event packets are variable length and the number of 32-bit words, the size is in the words field. These variable length packets can then be added to variable length event lists. If you've used core MIDI before, these APIs are all familiar to you. MIDI send and MIDI received use the legacy APIs MIDI packet and MIDI packet list. The legacy APIs have all been updated to make use of MIDI event packet and MIDI event list and to allow flexibility in your protocol selection. Core MIDI handles all I.O. in MIDI 2.0 natively and, if necessary, converts to the receiver's protocol upon delivery. That means that anything that you would do in MIDI 1.0, you can now do in MIDI 2.0 and still communicate to MIDI 1.0 listeners in their native protocol via this automatic translation. You'll find all those APIs I just mentioned in the MIDI, server, uh, MIDI services.h header file alongside their MIDI 1.0 APIs, which have now been deprecated, but of course not removed, as well as some useful helper APIs. And MIDI messages.h has a variety of convenience functions for handling MIDI 2.0 and MIDI 1.0. All right, let's move on to USB MIDI 2.0. The USB MIDI 2.0 spec was ratified by the USB IF several years ago, and there is currently a large prototyping effort underway for USB MIDI 2.0 hardware. You'll be glad to know that we've got support built into Mac OS and iOS when more of those new products ultimately reach the market. I gave a version of this talk um, a, a few years back, and at that time, there was not any commercially available uh, options for MIDI 2.0 and MIDI 1UP, and now there are. And I'm expecting to see more on the showroom floor and also with prototypers while I'm here at NAMM. Okay, so if you have an alternate setting for USB MIDI 2.0 and require MIDI CI to determine the initial protocol, 
Core MIDI's USB driver will always negotiate MIDI 2.0 protocol if it's available. We don't currently support jitter reduction timestamps, but if you are interested in prototyping hardware that does, please get in touch with us and I'll tell you how to do that. So please send us your prototypes. Craig Linson is our partnership manager for audio and MIDI technologies. He's the man you want to email, and Craig can also put you in touch with me if that's what's needed. All right, let's switch gears and talk about audio unit APIs, which also enjoy MIDI 2.0 native support on Mac OS and iOS. So bo both version 2 and version 3 of audio units support MIDI 2.0 and MIDI 1.0. More detailed info on the version 2 implementation can be found at the indicated URL. And there's actually an Xcode template for version 3 audio units, also known as audio unit extensions. And a very long but hopefully memorable URL as well that I will give you a moment to copy or take a picture of. Okay, the extra, short, the extra short version is that these are the properties that control MIDI 2.0 support for audio units. Like Core MIDI, the protocol is converted anywhere it needs to be for the legacy audio units and hosts. Okay, let's move on to AV Audio Engine. There's also MIDI 2.0 protocol support built into AV Audio Engine. If you're already using it, you'll be glad to know that adding MIDI 2.0 support is simple, as you've come to expect by now. So, for your MIDI instrument AUs, AU MIDI IO output block now has a UMP friendly counterpart called AU MIDI event list block. And that event block can be used by MIDI processors in the Connect MIDI API, now expanded to accommodate this new event list block. Again, if you only understand MIDI 1.0, that is what you'll get, even if the far end is using MIDI 2.0 natively. All translatable messages are going to be translated on delivery if that is required. Okay, let's move on to Pro Apps. It's so moving right on through. In addition to our MIDI 2.0 API support across the board in all of our audio frameworks, Logic Pro for Mac and Logic Pro iPad also have MIDI 2.0 support built in. So whatever you did with MIDI 1.0 messages, you can now do with their MIDI 2.0 equivalents and Logic also processes MIDI 2.0 channel voice message note attribute data. And there's high resolution editing as well. I just checked the MIDI 2.0 box in the app settings and just like that, you're using UMP. All right, to recap, we talked about event packets and event lists the building blocks around which the core MIDI, the audio unit, AV Audio Engine MIDI 2.0 APIs are built. And to reiterate, across all these systems, you can use MIDI 2.0 natively and expect that the data will be down converted to any MIDI 1.0 listener for the legacy clients if required. There's also USB MIDI 2.0 support in both Mac OS and iOS. And you can even use MIDI 2.0 natively in Logic, both on the Mac and on iOS. So if you don't remember anything else I said today, please remember this. If you are already on Apple's platforms and using our APIs, moving to MIDI 2.0 is very simple. And if you're not, you'll have powerful API available to you that will automatically translate to MIDI 1.0 across the board when you do. So you can get your app ready for the future. So you can really help us deliver high quality support, continue to deliver high quality support for MIDI 2.0 on all of our platforms by using the Feedback Assistant website at feedbackassistant.apple.com. Well, what if you're not sure what you're seeing is a bug? Great, please use feedbackassistant.apple.com. What if it's not a bug, it's a feature? Well, what's that website called? Feedback Assistant dot apple dot com. Also, please don't assume that Apple knows about an issue so that you don't need to file a bug. We might not. And even when we do, we can better determine the scope of the impact of the problem on you and on the industry with multiple unique reports from separate sources. Multiple reports add visibility. And once again, the website you're going to use is... I can't hear anything 
but I think you do know what the website is. Okay, that's all I have for today. I'm actually going to stick around uh, for a bit if I can clarify anything further off stage. I thank you very much for your time and attention. Have a great NAMM show. Round of applause for Tori Walker from Apple. Great job. Thank you.